What's up, YouTube? God mandated study video. Still sleeping. My neighbor's alarm was buzzing. This truck woke me up. <laughs> I got to thinking. Uh, I had a question, and it was, I'm still sleeping, and I'm like, is it the the uh, Revelation 16, Revelation 11 talks about a great earthquake. I'm not talking about a little earthquake. I'm talking about a great freaking earthquake that is if it hits our country and my pad my old pastor preaches it it's going to it's going to be devastation uh possibly um and my question was lord because uh of what god showed me about the dc now a lot of my prophetic book is centered in this stuff so it's not a coincidence i i mean to me it's it's in my head you know it's if it's part of my calling from god it's it's always up here, you know, even when I sleep it. But uh, I'm like, is it, are them all blessed coming down from these earthquakes? Next thing I know, God's got me all, all this stuff. He's like, tush, 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 tush. And I'm like, I'm still sleeping. I'm like, okay, I'll try to remember that. I'm going to write it down. And then I'm like, oh, crap. I just got to get up and start writing. So I got up and wrote everything down. Now, I'm I'm not a good note taker, okay? But uh, <laughs> I did my best. And I took my chicken scratch and I tried to make an outline, okay? So bear with me. Revelation 16, 18. <clears throat> there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since, the, since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Revelation eleven thirteen, And the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men thousands. And a remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. See, everything's clicking. I didn't even see the last part. And gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, <clears throat> for whatever reason, God uses me to reach people that... I mean, they're. I'm not surprised if it's they're billionaires for sure. Maybe a couple trillionaires here and there. I don't know, but you know what? Um, I gotta, I gotta give what God gave me. Okay. Now, that was my question. I'm gonna go off my notes. Okay. I don't normally do this. I usually just. <clears throat> but there's too much stuff here. Uh, so that was my question. How God's going to bring down them. Oh, bless. He already sh told me he was going to. He showed me. I wrote it down years ago. Now, some why this is prophetic stuff, okay? This ain't from man. This is prophetic stuff from God. Uh, some whys. Why would he? Well, what's those, those oh, bless mean? Occultic. This is just in my mind. Occultic, satanic, ancient, from Egypt. Freemasonry, evil, and it represents Nimrod's genitalia. <laughs> it's sick. Sexual deviance, no doubt. Okay? And I understand the why. Now, <clears throat> we're in the last kingdom of man, okay? According to Bible, you can see it. Everybody knows it. That's no surprise. The last uh, realm of man's domination... Christ's return from the millennium takes over, right? Now, again, Daniel's statue backs this up. The feet, iron and clay. I'm not going to teach that. Look at look up studies on Daniel's statue if you don't know anything about it. But the rock, Christ is the rock. Bust the statue, bam! And, that, and, and the whole thing comes down to five kingdoms of man. The five main ones from Babylon to now. We're at the bottom of Iron Clay. Look at endtime.com. Great studies on this stuff. Okay. Um, Christ breaks it through the whole... Now, these old bless, I've, I've come to realize it through the whole world. i just seen it on my TV. There's one in France. Oh, right, they're all over the place. All countries. No doubt. I don't know. There's even one at the Vatican. St. Peter's. What's the Vatican got to do with all this satanic crap? Well, well, <laughs> do your own study, Vatican and Satanism. Now, there's a man. I don't know why he was on my mind. This was years ago. I'm going to share something. Now, Rupert Murdoch, he owns the NIV Bible, or used to. I don't know. He 
Maybe he sold it. He also owned Bart Simpson. I used to watch Bart Simpson in the early 90s when I was wor working and living on the U.S. Air Force Base in California, Edwards Air Force Base. And uh, I came across something. One of the episodes says, the Freemasons run the world. The Freemasons run the world. I can't remember exactly. It's probably on the Internet. But it was some stupid thing they had in that cartoon, right? It just, it, it stands out. God put all this on my mind this morning. It's not me. I was in prayer years ago. And for whatever reason, I said, God, humble Rupert Murdoch. And would you believe it? Three weeks later, approximately, I think it was the English apartment. I'm watching TV. And Rupert Murdoch and his wife come stand. I think it was before English Parliament. And he said, I don't even know why. But it was God showing me something about connecting this stuff. I don't know why God wants you people attention. But, hey, that's between you and him. I'm just, I'm just the middleman. But he said, this is the most humbling day of my life. It was a quote. I'm like, oh. and then I remembered the prayer when I heard it on TV. I'm like, What? See, God's doing something. God's doing something. Um, what else? Yeah. Bart Simpson. Hey, who remembers that? They keep saying it. Donald Trump, Melania, I think, was coming down the escalator on the Bart Simpson video. Come to think of it, uh, Camelia Harris. Camelia Harris was, uh, they got her on there with with her dress and pearls on a Bar Simpson. And it was just, that just happened like a month ago. Prophetic? Absolutely not. No way. Orchestrated? Most definitely. In my mind, yeah. They, they run the world, right? They, whatever. Until God, you know, you know, judges and crushes and sins been hell. But God knows how to humble the untouchable, and bring them down to the lowest hell if need be. If God has to kill you, he will kill you. <laughs> now, what's what's old Bart Simpson and the Vatican have in common? I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Just a thought. The prophetic, now the prophetic book God has me writing is focused on these areas. He would give me you know, years ago, I did, uh, I did, I was sat under eschatology teacher for over 10 years, and uh, he'd teach it a lot, and it, I was really super interested, I'm like, wow, I never heard of this stuff before, and I would study and study, and I would buy tapes, I spent hundreds of dollars, and then one day I'm like, and I would witness to people at work, and then I would be like, man, this is kind of depressing, and one day I said, you know what, I just shoved it all in the closet, forgot about it for years. I ain't touching it. I don't like it. It makes it depresses me. If I'm going to be in church, I'm going to I'm going to seek the Holy Ghost that brings comfort and joy and love, right? And I was like, I'm not going to touch this in time. It depresses me. I don't like it. Well, wouldn't you know it? No, I wrote a book on it. <laughs> it's because it's part of my call from God. Okay, so whatever you have from God, you have to do it. Now. One last question. What's the old Vatican got to do with skull and bones? I remember years ago. This, Like I said, these are all old thoughts that got put them on my mind half an hour ago. Um, still sleeping. On their old crucifixes. I saw one years ago that they had at the bottom where you hold it, there was a skull and bones emblem like the Nazis at the bottom. And uh, I don't know what it means, but... Uh, I'm going to end this here. So I got through all my notes. I don't know what this is about. Um, my question this morning when I was still sleeping, half and half out, and uh, I was like, Lord, for some reason I thought of that. I thought of Revelation 16 and Revelation 11, the earthquake. And I'm like, Lord, is that how you're going to bring down the obelisks? And boom. This is where the uh, birth of this uh, study came from. Uh, Matthew 5.44, it was popped up on my screen earlier. Uh, pray for your enemies. Love them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Oh, here it is. 
But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. See, I don't know what God's doing. God knows what God's doing. Okay? Uh, as far as I know, this study's over. God bless. If you're not biblically born again, look at my born again playlist. God loves everybody. He doesn't discriminate nobody. He looks at the beggar just like he looks at the trillionaires. Same level. And when we all stand before Jesus Christ on Judgment Day, it's going to be according to your works. Did you love Jesus? Did you do what he told you? Were you biblically born again like he told you to be? John 3, 3, 3, 5, and 3, 7. He preached in Acts 1 and John 7. And in all kind of places. Then he told his apostles to do it. Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John 3. Yeah, it's all over the place. Seven prophets, John Baptist. Come on. Luke 3, 16. Shall not God give the Holy Ghost to them and ask? Of course. Now he knows you people are jacked up in the mind and the heart. He knows all that. It's from satanic stuff. It's probably from your family lineage. Because people that hate God... They're cursed four generations past. Say your great-great-great-grandfather hated God and served Satan. God will curse one, two, three, four generations down. You're cursed because your great-great-great-grandfather. That's how it works. But when you obey the Lord and you get biblically born again and you turn your life around, you do the best you can. And some of you are cannibals, I guess, and you eat babies. I don't know. Satanic sick stuff. I don't know. And you stop doing that stupid stuff, God will help you. And you stop being cursed, and God will bless you. Okay? You probably, people know more than anybody. No, money doesn't make you happy. Right? It doesn't bring joy and happiness. At, 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 at the least, it brings your enemies trying to rip you off all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> just being real, just being myself. But uh, yeah, for some reason, God connected all this with this, you, me, it, life, end times, earthquake. I'm warning everybody to repent from the top to the bottom. You better repent. God is serious when it happens, man. Uh, God loves everybody. He doesn't. God is not willing that any should perish. My video might cut out, but all come to repentance. I want to see if it cuts out at 13 minutes. That would have been cool. <laughs> That's all. God bless. God loves you. Repent or face his judgment, and it will be at the lake of fire, the great white throne judgment. You don't want to be there. You want to, you want to get your spiritual life ordered straight now, and do God's will before the judgment, or you won't make it. Many Christian people are not born again. They're not going to make it. For whatever reason, this, that, and the other thing, they got brain damage. My video is about to cut out any second, I'll bet you. I don't know. God bless. That's all. Good luck. <laughs>